for he is worthy uh, to be praised. We thank God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. For our God still reigns, our God still rules, he is still sovereign, he is still almighty, all-powerful, all-loving, and all-good, and he's worthy of our utmost praise. The psalmist says that we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and his truth endures to all generations. Do you have something to shout about today? Do you have something to give God praise for today? Just the simple fact that he woke you up this morning, started you on your way. He has mercifully kept you. He has graciously bestowed blessings on blessings on top of blessings in, in on your life and in your life and for that you ought to be thankful and you ought to be grateful as the psalmist said oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together oh bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name to be praised we just thank god for another privilege, another blessed opportunity uh, to call on his name today and to worship him in spirit and in truth and to continue praising and worshiping him in spite of our current circumstances. For we know that we serve an unlimited God. And we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And certainly uh, the church, the large church has been demonstrating all throughout this global pandemic uh, that our God is unstoppable. And uh, if we don't cry out, then the rocks uh, will cry out. And we don't want any rocks crying out, uh, uh, giving praise on our behalf. He's been good to us. And for that, we ought to tell it everywhere we go. We ought to tell it every day how good and how great our God is. Thank you all for tuning in today on Facebook Live. And for those of you who are tuned in to the conference call, we want to thank you for uh, your commitment to worship and praise the Lord through these uh, technological uh, means of Facebook and conference call. Thank you for tuning in. We pray and we hope that uh, through today's segment of praise, prayer, and preaching, that you would be lifted, that you would uh, go on your way rejoicing, experiencing the power and the presence uh, of the Lord. And we definitely want to say happy, happy, happy uh, Mother's Day. We have so much that we can say as it relates to how God has blessed us all through uh, mothers, and we thank him uh, that we can take this time today to uh, to remember, uh, to celebrate, uh, to reflect on how the Lord has blessed us with mothers all over uh, all over this world. So we want to say to all of our mothers who are listening, who are watching, a happy Mother's Day, and we pray that uh, this would be a blessed day for you. And we praying and hoping uh, that this would uh, be another blessing, another check mark. And you can add that God has allowed you uh, to see not just another day, but another opportunity to celebrate uh, and reflect on Mother's Day. I want you to, uh, if you can, go with me for our scripture reading. It will be taken from Psalm 95, verse 1 through 7. And it says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also the sea is his, for he made it, 
and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The word of the Lord. At this time, I'm going to have Deacon Hooks come and lead us to the throne of grace with a word of prayer. Eternal God and Father, we come at this very hour of the day. O oh God, thanking you for your many blessings that thou hast bestowed upon us. Lord, we thank you for the early rising on this morning, and we thank you for this present moment that we share here in this worship experience. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who hung, bled, suffered, and died, that we uh, may have the right to the tree of life. Lord, we thank you for health, and we thank you for strength. And now, Lord, as we enter into this worship experience, Lord, we ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to rain down upon our shepherd today, O God, as he give us a word on today. Uh, now, Lord, we ask for a very special blessing upon mothers across this land, O God. We ask, O God, that you give them vigor, vitality, health, and strength, and allow them to continue in their motherly duty, O oh God. We thank you for them, O oh God. Lord, I thank you for my wife, O oh God. Continue to bless her in a very special way, O oh God, we pray. And now, Lord, for those that are motherless, O oh God, we ask that you will comfort them in these times, O oh God. Throw your loving arms of protection around them. We ask it in your name. And now, Lord, we ask that you would touch this world that we live in, O oh God, from our neighborhoods to our national and world neighborhoods. Let your Holy Spirit run rampant around this country. Be a hedge of protection, O oh God. Be a healing, we pray, O oh God. Touch our local, state, and national world leaders, O oh God. Put them all on one accord, O oh God, so they may do what's right for the people of this world. And now, Lord, when we've come to the end of life's journey, the battle has been fought and the victory has been won. Cross us over, where every day will be Sundays and Sabbaths will have no end. This is thy servant prayer. I offer up in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And to God be the glory. Thank you, Deacon Hooks, for a fervent prayer. But we do need prayer in these days that we are living in. For the Bible says that the effective fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Again, to those of you who may have just joined in on our Facebook Live or our conference call, we want to thank you. Uh, for tuning in uh, to our segment of praise, prayer, and preaching on this Mother's Day 2020. I am very confident that if the church would be inside of the building today, and of course, all across this country, there are different situations and circumstances for each state. Uh, the the Coronavirus uh, is, uh, is affecting states and cities in different ways. There are hotbeds in all parts of this country. Uh, but we, we, we realize that Mother's Day is a special day on the church calendar. And, and, and if, if all of this was not going on, and, and even if it was not to this extent, to where we could not assemble in the Lord's house if, 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 we, if we did not have the guidelines of, of 10 people uh, within, within uh, a building, uh, we know that the Lord's church would be packed to capacity. We know that Mother's Day 
is a day where uh, the, the, the large church, the local church, sees a lot of guests and visitors uh, who do come uh, to worship with their mothers, uh, grandmothers, aunts, to all of those special women in their lives. And we know that uh, on this particular day, the second Sunday in the month of May, uh, we see we see a lot of visitors and a lot of guests. But in the midst of all of that, we still can praise and worship God. In, in the midst of all of the, uh, the, the evil that we're seeing today, all of the bad news on top of bad news, uh, in the midst of all of that, we know that our God is working all things together for good. We know that he's still reigning in his absolute providence even over the bad, even over the ugly, even over the evil uh, that we're experiencing uh, today. Uh, but again, thank you all for tuning in uh, to Facebook Live and on the conference call. Those of you who are committed, uh, whether or not we're inside or, we're, or outside, or if on Facebook on the conference call, uh, you are committed uh, to uh, worship the Lord on Mother's Day, you have a, you have a, you have a, uh, a I won't quit kind of an attitude, and so we want to commend you uh, for being faithful in your commitment to worship and praise the Lord. At this time, we want to encourage you to, as well, be faithful. Continue to be committed in your financial stewardship uh, towards the Lord. On last week, the Lord allowed me to preach a message uh, that dealt with that very subject of our financial commitment. Because even in hard times, we have to talk about uh, how uh, we must be good stewards of what the Lord has entrusted to us. Even in bad times, God still expects us, and he already knows all of our circumstances. He already knows our unique situations and whatever the Lord has given us, whatever he's at, he has entrusted us with, whether it be a little or whether it be a lot, he, he still wants us to be faithful in the little and faithful uh, with a lot. And so uh, we want to encourage you all to continue uh, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness uh, through uh, your financial stewardship by honoring the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of your in, of your increase. There's, there are multiple ways that you can continue to give. Here at Stronghold Baptist Church, you can drop your, uh, your financial contribution right here in our physical location, 2401 South Galvez Street, 70125 New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, you can drop it off on Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays from uh, the hours of 11 to 3 o'clock p.m. Or if you want to mail it to our P.O. Box, you can do that as well. You can mail it uh, to our P.O. Box 13654, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70185. And if you're like me, you, uh, you love to use uh, the technology, go ahead and download the Givelify app. Download it to your phone, and you can, with the click of a button, you can send your contribution electronically uh, to Stronghold Baptist Church. So go ahead and download our Givelify app, type in Stronghold Baptist Church, and you should see, you will see, that uh, icon that we have, or that logo of the uh, lighthouse, the Word of God lights our way. Or if you want to use Cash App, you can do that as well. The dollar sign, and you'll type Stronger Hope. Uh, so we have multiple ways uh, for uh, people to give. And so we encourage you uh, to be faithful uh, in that endeavor of uh, bringing all of the, the tithes and offering into the Lord's house that there may be meat in the Lord's house. We, we believe in the Lord's house being fully resourced uh, through the commitment, the committed contributions of the Lord's people. All right, well, thank you very much uh, for that. 
Thank you for listening. Let me say this as well before we move a little further into the worship experience. This time that we're in, we're not being able to gather in the physical facility, in the, in the physical building, has yes indeed presented some challenges for all churches. We've had to adjust to technology and we're still trying to adjust. We're still trying to make upgrades. And so uh, please be patient with us. Uh, we, are, we are learning like a lot of churches. We're learning how to go live. And we, we, we've been live before, but we're trying to make some upgrades with all of the, of the, different, uh, all of the different gadgets that we have now at our disposal. And so you're going to see Shomo making some updates and some up, some upgrades uh, in the near future. And, and sometimes you may bump into uh, some technical difficulties. And, and, and when, you, when that happens, if it happens, just be patient with us uh, because we want to continue to provide quality ministry. And, and no ministry in that endeavor of pursuing quality ministry uh, no ministry is going to experience perfection all of the time. And so uh, sometimes I have to remind myself as well by pinching myself uh, that yes, mistakes happen, bloopers, blunders will happen. Uh, you, you, the, we, I may think that we're live and, and I could be preaching up a storm and, and might not be live at all. And so that can happen and I've seen it happen with churches and, and what can you do? We're, we're human, we make mistakes. And so I want to give you an opportunity, strong old members and, and for anyone who's listening, you can pray for your church in this regard. Sunday morning worship, Sunday afternoon worship, whatever time of day you gather at your local church, it is so important, it is so critical that you people of God have the opportunity all throughout the week to be praying for Sunday morning worship event. Yes, pray for your pastor. Yes, pray that God would give him a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit so that when he stands behind the pulpit on Sunday, he can preach heaven down. He can preach with us, says the Lord. Yes, pray for the choir members. Yes, pray for the ushers. Pray for every aspect, but don't forget about technology. And right now, the church we're depending on technology uh, to be used as our means to advance the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so pray, saints, pray that, that God would cover our, our equipment, pray that, that, um, that uh, we, we gain understanding in, in trying to and trying to use these different uh, these different means on on, on, uh, on Facebook Live and YouTube, just pray for your church uh, that uh, we would get better and better as we pursue excellence and quality ministry uh, through this media platform. And so please keep that in mind. And then one more thing that I want to add before I, I move to the next part of praise, prayer, and preaching. This is another opportunity for you to engage in electronic evangelism. That's right. I'll say it again. This is another opportunity for you to engage in what I call electronic evangelism. Yes, we are experiencing the, uh, the, uh, the challenges, the restrictions, and guidelines of what we can do. There is still a stay-at-home order here in the state of, of Louisiana. And even when things get back to what we think are normal, there's still some adjustments. There's still some, some realities that we have to adjust to. And so uh, keep, keep that in mind. But, but this is an opportunity for you and I to engage in electronic evangelism. What do you mean, Pastor? I mean this. This is an opportunity for you to share on your Facebook page. If you have a Facebook page, use it as an opportunity. Use it as a tool to glorify God. Paul says, whatever you do, 
whether you eat or whether you drink, he says, give glory. Do unto the glory of God. And so uh, follow your church page. Follow Stronghold Baptist Church and share. Share Sunday's worship. Share it on your page. Electronic evangelism is so simple that all you got to do is press the share button. Sharing is caring. You want to share the gospel of Jesus during COVID-19? You want to share the gospel of Jesus when people are uh, mostly at home? Go ahead and share. With whatever kind of information your church is putting out on social media, go ahead and share it. Share the gospel of Jesus through your church. Get the word out because the Bible says, Jesus says, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And so we've got an opportunity to engage in fruitful, productive, soul-winning, evangelistic endeavors by just promoting, sharing the, the information for Sunday worship, midweek worship, Bible study. We get to, we get to share that on Facebook. All right. Well, I've, I've said a lot, and uh, I don't want to hold you long today because I do know that you have a lot of plans uh, today. You want to spend time with family. I know we, we've got these restrictions, but but uh, I think many of us are still going to try to, uh, you know, do what we can do, uh, but also do it acknowledging and realizing that we, we have to keep ourselves safe and we have to keep friends and, and loved ones safe as well. So keep using those masks, uh, keep using good hygiene practices, and uh, keep using uh, those hand sanitizers, keep on washing those hands, and uh, let's continue to soak all of that with prayer that God will protect us uh, from this a deadly disease from this from this uh, this disease called uh, the uh, coronavirus. There's a song that I want to sing, uh, and I want to dedicate this to all of the mothers. Again, keep in mind this is technology, and technology has a mind of its own. But I'm going to try this and sing one of my favorite songs, and so I'm going to dedicate this. Uh, to all of the mothers out there. This is my way, Pastor D, this is my way of saying Happy Mother's Day. What am I saying to you? I'm saying hold on to God's unchanging hands and make sure your soul is anchored in the Lord. Sometimes it's 
hard to tell the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storms don't cease, mm -hmm, and the winds they keep on blowing in my life, my
storms of life are very evident. I want to encourage you to make sure that your soul is anchored in the Lord because he's unchanging. Keep your soul anchored in him because he's all powerful. Keep your soul anchored in him because he's all knowing. Keep your soul anchored in him because he's all good and he knows how to carry us. He knows how to protect us. He knows how uh, to manifest uh, his power divine in our lives even when we're going through some stormy situations. Well, I hope your Bible is ready. I want to encourage you for just a, a brief moment. I want you to turn with me to the book of Exodus. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Exodus. And I want to encourage you with a word from the Lord. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. And I'm going to begin reading with verse 1, verse 1 through 10. Uh, but I think I'll start with verse 22 of chapter 1. So I'll begin with chapter 1, verse 22, and I'll end with verse 10 of Exodus chapter 2. And I'm reading this from the New King James Version. You're going to find these similar words. So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, every, every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child. She hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked along the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and call the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became a son. So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. The grass withers, my brothers and sisters, and the word of God never fails. I want us to, just for a brief moment of your time, uh, talk about this thought, the devotion of a God-honoring mother. The devotion of a God-honoring mother. And we're saying that in light of Exodus chapter uh, 
2, verse 1 through 10. But let me um, put alongside uh, Exodus chapter 2 this particular verse, which is found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 23, which says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Let me say that one more time. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. I want to talk about that today, the devotion of a God-honoring mother. The devotion of a God-honoring mother. You know, Mother's Day is both special and sensitive. We joyfully celebrate and we mournfully remember our biological mothers and women who serve as mother figures in our lives. We honor mothers. We, we honor your dedication and your devotion in raising us. And we honor your dedication and your devotion in caring for us. And we honor your dedication and your devotion for loving us. Mary McLeod Bethune stated, next to God, we are forever indebted to women. First for life itself and then for making it worth living. We're talking about today the devotion of a God-honoring mother. The devotion, my brothers and sisters, of a mother's of a mother's love is unparalleled and incomparable. That there, there is nothing like a mother's love. And, and we all know this to a certain extent. I mean, we've all been in grade school and we know that bullying has been around since the days of Cain and Abel. Bullying was perfected by Joseph's brother when they bullied him for the dream that God gave him. We all have been bullied and we've all been bullies. And all of us can remember being on school campus, on the playground, wherever it was, on the school lot. And they could have talked about your daddy. They could have talked about your brother. They could have calmed your sister. They could have calmed your dog, your cat. They could have made fun of the house that you were living in. They could have called your four eyes. They could have, they could have clowned you for the clothes that you wore. But don't let them make the mistake of talking about your mama. Don't let them, don't let them cross the line of talking bad about your mother. All of us know how special and sensitive uh, that is for us as children who love their mothers, who admire their mothers, who honor their mothers. I will fight you. And you said that before in, in school. I'm sure you have. You talk about my mama, brother. You talk about my sister. And we're going to be rolling around in that dirt. We love our mothers and would fight for them. And we see in Exodus the, the love of Moses' mother. In, in, in this chapter, we see in Exodus chapter 2, this mother's love for her child and the significance of her devotion and bravery. I mean, we can all just take a pause and just thank God for the devotion, the calculated devotion and the, and the bravery of mothers. 
Jacobi, like many mothers, uh, was at a crossroads. She was at a crossroads. And despite the orders, despite the decree of Pharaoh, Jacobet responded uh, to that decree, to those royal orders. She responded with holy defiance in order to protect her family, uh, particularly her son, her child, Moses, who would become a great leader of the Hebrew people, a leader who would lead them out of Egyptian bondage. His mother may not have known about this at the time she gave birth to Moses. She, she didn't have any specific details uh, from the Lord as it relates to who this child would become, how great of a leader he would become in the history of the Hebrew people, of the Israelites. She didn't know any of this. She did not know how special and significant the life of her son Moses would become. But verse 2 reads, And when she saw, I'm not going to hold you long now, And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. When she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. I mean, our mothers, listen here, our mothers have a way of seeing our potential when others cannot see our potential. I mean, our mothers, they have a unique way of protecting our purpose in life despite the realities of peril and plight. Let me see that again. Mothers have a unique way of protecting the purpose of their children. Why? Because they see purpose. Why? Because they see potential in their children when no one else can see purpose and see potential. Our mothers, they can see purpose and potential uh, when only, when everyone else can only see peril and plight. And, and my brothers and sisters, many of us can testify today, many of us can say amen to the fact today that we have been living on purpose and we've been pursuing God-given purpose because we had a mother or we had mother figures who saw our potential, who saw our Purpose. Let me just go ahead and, and use my brother, Pastor Mili and I. Let me just go ahead and use uh, myself and him as an example because him and I are today, we are pastoring as young men. We are pastoring the large church. We are, we are, we are tending to feeding the large people, the word of God, pastoring the large church. People And can I tell you why? That is because our mother and our grandmothers protected our purpose. And, and I'm quite sure that you and I, uh, we, can, we can say and we can sing that song together. Somebody pray for me. But, but, they, but there's a part of that song that becomes so personal when you say, my mother prayed for me. She, she had me on my mind. She took the time. And she prayed yeah. for me. If you're living on purpose today, if you're still pursuing purpose, regardless of who you are, where you are in life, you ought to thank God for the mother that he gave you. You ought to thank God for the time that she was here. You ought to thank God if she's still here. You ought to thank God for those mothers, those women who, who stepped up and they became godly motherly figures in your life so that you can continue to pursue purpose and you could live out to the maximum of the maximum potential that God placed on the inside of you. Can you just say that today? 
I'm so glad she prayed. I, I, I'm so glad that my mother prayed for me. No, I'm not saying that our mothers are perfect. No, I'm not saying that they did everything right. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you ought to thank God that mother took the time and she prayed for you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad she prayed for me. Although Moses' biological mother is not mentioned until the sixth chapter of the book of Exodus, her character, my brothers and sisters, her character shines bright in Exodus chapter 2. There, there is no mention of a name. But we we can infer, we can, we can, we can draw the conclusion that this was a God-honoring woman, woman who was devoted to honoring the Lord, and she did that through her character. She did that through her courage. She she did that through her attitude and her actions. The character of of Jacobed was number one, she was devoted. Verse 2 tells us, and when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months when she saw. I'm, I'm trying to give to you the, the character of Moses' mother. She was devoted. So devoted that she defied the king's order. And then secondly, we see that uh, Moses' mother, Jacobed, was she was nurturing. Verse 9 tells us, then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Jacobed, take this child away and nurse him for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman Jacobed, Moses' biological mother, took the child and nursed him. Listen, God in his divine providence had worked that entire situation out. You, you cannot tell me that God can't use all things for his glory. Paul says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. My brothers and sisters, you can trust God not only for the good times in your life, but you can trust God for the bad times. You can trust him with the bitter and with the sweet, with the sunshine and the rain, even when evil is all around us, even when evil is knocking on our doors. Can I tell you, when disaster and calamity and trouble and temptation comes our way, our God is still faithful. He is still unchanging in his person, in his power, in his providence, and in his provision. Still faithful to work all of that for good. And God worked that situation out. Let me just go ahead and say it the way I feel. He worked that thing out. God worked it out so much so that Moses' sister, Miriam, had kept a good eye on Moses, baby Moses, as he drifted in the water in that basket and kept an eye out on Mo on baby Moses and went to Pharaoh's daughter and said, you want me to go get someone who can nurse this baby, this Hebrew baby, and that's exactly what Pharaoh's daughter consented to. And she told Miriam, go, 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 go get her. And Miriam went and got Moses' biological mother. I I'm trying to tell you today that God worked that thing out. And, and Jochebed was nurturing. She nursed Moses, but then Thirdly, she was God-fearing. And then she was committed. 
I'm just, just going to say these few things. And then, and then she was loving. She was devoted. She was nurturing. She was God-fearing because she feared God more than she feared the orders of the Pharaoh. She, she prioritized her obedience to God over her obedience uh, to Pharaoh. She was God-fearing. She knew that it was better to obey and serve God than it was to obey and serve man. And she was committed. She nursed Moses. And when it was time to give him back, that's exactly what she does. The text tells us that she brought Moses back to Pharaoh's daughter. She was committed and she was loving, of course. What we see in Jacobed, as we see in, in all mothers, is their devotion to motherhood. Mothers are, are so devoted in, in seeing the inner beauty and the outer beauty of their children. A, a child, for example, can, can have challenge on top of challenge, can have issue on top of issue. A child can have problem on top of problem, but that devoted God-honoring mother will stoop down, look that child in the eye, and say with confidence, you was kind, you was smart, and you was important. You ought to say amen to that. I know it ain't good English. I know if you turn that kind of a paper in, uh, your teacher's going to put all kind of grammar marks because it ain't, it, it's not good English. But that's what our mothers did back in the day. They didn't have a whole lot to work with. They were limited in their resources. They were dealing uh, with raising children in the context of suffering, in the context of slavery and injustice. And what did those mothers do in spite of the challenges? What did they do in spite of the issues and the problems on top of problems? They still stooped down. They still looked their children in the eye and said with confidence, you were kind, you were smart, and you is important. And listen, you ought to be glad today that, that our mothers of yesteryear were able to tell their children and, and they were able to tell them you were smart, you was kind, and you was important. And then their children was able to pass it on. And, and that's why we are strong uh, the way we are, because that passed down from one generation to the next. In spite of what it looks like, in spite of what it is, we can still see inner and outer beauty in our people. The devotion. I gotta come to a close now. The devotion of a God honoring mother. Mm -hmm. The devotion of a God honoring mother can, number one, and I hope you're enjoying this, I hope you're being blessed by this. The devotion of a God honoring mother can, number one, protect their children at all costs. And that's what we that's, that's what we discover in this. In this narrative in Exodus chapter 2, that this God honoring mother was protecting her child at all costs. But then, number two, the devotion of a God honoring mother can teach their children the ways of the Lord. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we, we, we've got to continue to teach our children uh, how to fear, how to respect. How to honor the Lord. The beginning of wisdom starts with fearing, respecting, reverencing God. So we've got to teach our children the ways of the Lord. That's a part of, of the de devotion of a God honoring mother. But then, thirdly, the devotion of a God honoring mother can teach their children how not to be afraid of evil. Evil is in the picture. I mean, you cannot read, uh, you cannot read these first two chapters of Exodus and, and not realize that these are some some hard times. These are some 
These are some troubling times. This is a context of suffering and, and bondage and enslavement for the Hebrew people. And Jochebed was teaching. She's teaching through her character and her conduct. She's teaching that a God-honoring mother teaches their children how not to be afraid of evil. And, and she modeled that when she defied the king's orders by, by not having her son harmed or, or, or killed. She, she hid him for three months. And, and that's, that is the, the, the makeup of a child of God's faith. We, we are taught how to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. We are, we are taught to do what David says in Psalm 23 and verse 4. Even though, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And if you know anything about David, David knew something about moral evils. He knew something about natural evils. He, he, he knew what evil felt like. He knew how evil affected him as a man in his thoughts, in his character. He knew that there were people who were evildoers. They were workers of iniquity who wanted him dead. David knew something about evil. Yeah. And he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. That's faith in God, beloved. When you have that fearless faith to stare fear in the eye and say, I'm not afraid. Stare evil in the eye and say, I'm not afraid afraid because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid of when the wicked came up against me? Do I have anyone in Facebook land and, and conference call land who just feels like giving the Lord a shout of praise right there? When the wicked came up against me to eat up of my flesh, what happened, David? They stumbled and they fell. Can I tell you, we can have that kind of fearless faith when we put our trust in the Lord. And that's what God honoring mothers do. They, they teach their children that you're not going to have sunshine all the time. They teach their children that you're not going to be perfect. You're gonna, they teach their children that you're going to mess up. You're going to fall short of the glory of God. They, they teach their children that trouble comes to everybody. But listen, don't you be afraid. Put your trust in God because he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Teach their children yeah, yeah. how not to be afraid of evil. But then fourthly, the devotion of a God-honoring mother leaves their children with a legacy of faith. Jacobin nurtured her children physically and spiritually, and she left them a legacy of faith. You know, I said in the beginning of this message that Mother's Day is, 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 a, is a day where there is a range of emotions felt by people on the emotional spectrum. You have people who are happy, you have people who are joyful, but then you have people on the other end of the spectrum who are mourning, who are grieving as they remember their mothers because their mothers are not here. And God knows, y'all, he knows because he's omniscient. He, he knows all of the different situations that people find themselves in. He knows those who are motherless. He knows those who have strained his strange relationships. He, he knows everything. And can I tell you something? God knows what to give us even in times like these. She, she nurtured her children physically and spiritually and she left them a legacy of faith. But then fifth, fifth uh, the, the, the devotion of a God-honoring mother uh, strengthens their children by 
always put people on, I gotta hurry up now so I can let you go and, and, and eat your good barbecue and your potato salad and your rice dressing and, and all that good food that I know some of you are gonna be cooking for your mothers or if you're not, if you're not cooking, I'm sure you're going, I'm sure you're gonna be ordering some takeout uh, today. But then, but then God honoring mothers, they enable great faith in their children during hard times. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me get out of here and, and, and let you go. If if Moses could celebrate Mother's Day, mm -hmm. if Moses could celebrate Mother's Day, I think he would celebrate uh, those 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 actions that I just mentioned, those attributes that I just mentioned about uh, his mother, Jacobin. How, how how do you how, how do you remember how do you remember mother? I'm sure Moses would, would say that's how I remember my mother. And in closing, while mothers and women celebrate this special day, uh, there are also mothers and women who are grieving. They will not see this this day again, the same again. Mothers like Wanda Cooper Jones, the mother of the late Armand Arbery. This mother, who in the year 1994 gave birth to her beloved son, Armand, on Mother's Day. I was reading an article, and uh, she was interviewed. And here's what she said, and I quote, here's what, here's what the article said as, as uh, concerning Ahmad's mother. She will get a lot of attention this Mother's Day, but not the kind of attention she is accustomed to. Not the sweet and, and earnest gestures from a loving son, a card, some flowers, Maybe some lopsided pancakes on a breakfast in bed tree. Her day, Wanda Cooper Jones, will be filled instead with grief and rage, a hole in her heart and an empty chair at the table. It will be filled with calls of condolence and questions about next steps after Gregory McMichael and Travis McMichael were arrested 74 days after grabbing their guns and chasing her unarmed, and I repeat again, unarmed 25-year-old son in their white pickup truck. Ahmad was, was simply running. He was running with purpose. He was running on purpose one day, and his life was cut short because of the prevailing evils of racism, discrimination, and injustice. My, My brothers and sisters, in the year 2020, 155 years after a civil war which was fought over the enslavement of black people. In the year 2020, 124 years after Plessy versus Ferguson. In the year 2020, 66 years after Brown versus Board of Education. In the year 2020, 56 years after the Civil Rights Act of 1964. In the year 2020, 55 years after the Voting Rights Act of 1965, black people still have to struggle with the sufferings of inequality and injustice. We are still being preyed upon because of the color of our skin. But like Moses' parents, we will not be afraid. Let me say it again. Like Moses' parents, we will not be afraid. We will not shrink in the shadows of silence. We will continue to produce and perfect potential and purpose in the black community. Yes, we too have been
been made in the image of God, the Imago Dei, and like Moses' mother, she saw a beautiful child when she saw her son. Gregory McMichael and his son Travis McMichael saw what they wanted to see. They saw a thief. They saw a thief. They saw, they saw a thug. They saw a threat. And I hope we don't have anyone watching or listening thinking, now why is the pastor becoming so political? Let me just say that so I can bust your bubble. Because unlike some Christians, we will not allow the word and the concept of justice My will. to be hijacked by the political world because justice, my brothers and sisters, originated with God. We serve a just God. Yeah, and yeah. we serve a righteous God who hates evil and who said in Micah chapter 6 verse 8, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your Lord, how can the church carry out the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ, making disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you? Before he says that, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. How can the church carry out the great commission if we do not carry out the great commandment, and that is to love the Lord our God and to love our neighbor as ourselves? My brothers and sisters, we must continue to pray. But then we must continue to fight for justice and fight for what is right. It is so eerily ironic how on this Mother's Day 2020, that lady, that mother, has to go throughout this day knowing that what she saw in her son, beauty, was the very opposite of what those two men saw the day they hunted him down like an animal. Justice does not belong to a political party. Justice does not belong in just the court of the Democrats or the Republicans. Justice belongs to God because he is a just God. And we must pray like Dr. King when he quoted the words of the prophet that justice would, would, would rush and flow like a mighty stream and sweep away all of the corruption and the evil. Now we know that evil won't be eradicated until Christ comes back. And we must pray that until that happens, that we can see these systemic forms of racism and sophisticated forms of evil washed away with an overflowing, mighty flow of justice. Again, to all of our mothers, we pray and we hope that you have a blessed day on today. Eat well. Eat as much as you can. Let your children spoil you. And we're praying as well for all of those who will grieve and mourn a little bit on today. Our prayer is that the Lord would give you the strength that you need to get through this day. But remembering God says that I'll be a mother to the motherless and a father to the fatherless. We hope and pray that we can see you this time again next week, 11 o'clock a.m. Pray for us and we will pray for you. We give God all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. Until next time, God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer. Go in peace and serve.